Hi everyone, my name is Peyton, and in this video what I want to do is actually go over how to create some neon lights inside of Unreal Engine 5. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do something a little bit more fun and also uh, something that yeah just has a, a lot of cool personality to it. And they're also of course super trendy with like how the, uh, the neon signs are with the vegetation and everything. Uh, so I wanted to just yeah, go over how to use Lumen to actually kind of tackle that. Um, so this will be our final result that we see here actually and I want to go from Maya and actually get this uh, to finish basically. So I'm going to delete these items here and then I have a couple of lights up here as well um, just kind of showing the scene. Uh, this monster, uh, monstera here uh, wall basically is just the monstera plant that I have here and so I kind of just moved it around and actually placed it to uh, make like a monstera wall. Um, you could definitely spend a lot more time on this but uh, I was just trying to get that idea down uh, pretty much. But what I want to do is actually jump over to Maya real quick and so here is our Maya uh, and I want to show how to actually come up with something like this. So. Uh, what I've started with first is I actually have my backing, um, so I just want it to be a little bit more realistic. Uh, so I've actually made almost like a, a smooth backing. I uh, beveled the edges a little bit. Uh, and in general, what I want it to do is actually line up uh, to where the, the letters, mainly the, the lowercase letters, fit on it, but then some of the uppercase uh, and just ones that hang down, uh, hang off a little bit. Uh, and that's, yeah, the main goal. I want it to be like a glass backing, so nothing insane, but it just makes it feel a little bit more connected to the, the background. Um, and then what I actually used for the lettering is, uh, you could do it a couple ways. Of course, you could use the curve tool and kind of extrude from that and all, uh, or do like a cylinder or something. Um, but with the emissive kind of producing so much light from it, you don't really see up close like the hard edges or anything anyways. Uh, so I just was actually just using the uh, 3D text tool inside of Maya. So I'm going to click here and we can see by default, yeah, it pops up with 3D type. Uh, and over here I can switch to type 3 under the attribute editor. And right here, um, this, basically this is our area where we could type out what we want. Um, so I'm going to type the Unreal Engine 5, uh, kind of like the example that I have up here. Uh, and then I can center the alignment uh, if I want something like that. And then, of course, a couple of other things that I definitely want to do is switch over from text to geometry. And I want to go ahead and actually do the extrude divisions, which are these divisions that are breaking down right here. I want to drop those down to nothing. That way it's a little bit flatter. And yeah, now we have that. And then the other thing I'm going to do, of course, is change the font. Um, now you can look up different types of cursive fonts or whatever online, um, maybe find a free one. And the one that I was able to get, so I'm going to jump over here again and, oh wait, got to go up here and hit text. Um, and then basically here where it's showing my font, I'm going to scroll down and I believe my font is this Nick Hanley, uh font here. I have, uh, yeah, this and then there's normal. Um, it was a, a font that I found online. And then I'm just going to basically switch it over uh, to that. So click there and we already have, yeah, the font working out. Um, and overall it looks pretty much like we have up here. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to bring this down because I basically want it to be much thinner. So yeah, at least something like that, maybe a little bit uh, thinner than that as well. Um, and there we go. Like it's pretty close to being the exact same. Uh, now one problem at least that, uh, found with the, yeah, the font is I'm going to switch over real quick to center pivot, move it up a little bit and then bring that down. Um, that way, yeah, now everything's hanging off. Uh, but then we also still have our, I could probably move this up a little bit more. Um, and there we go. Could probably, yeah, I'm gonna switch this over to center pivot as well. And I think I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. And yeah, I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's not a super big deal, um, but just mainly wanna get the, the letters and stuff on there, uh, kinda how I was wanting it. 
uh, but let's say that that is good. Uh, now one thing that I will want to do with this lettering is uh, you can see that the tops are massive and gons basically. Um, there's no like yeah, geometry going over that. Um, quick and easy way to just resolve that is uh, I'm just going to triangulate it. So I'm actually going to go up to mesh and go to the cleanup tool. Click on this little box here and then what we can find is I can turn on all these boxes here which I've already done um, previously. So you want to make sure that, yeah, it's just going to clean up basically uh, all issues uh, that might come up with this. And then I'm going to hit apply. So now we're going to see that it's gone to triangulation. Um, it's a little bit messier, but uh, it's not a huge deal uh, for the sign that we're kind of going for. Uh, so got that now. Uh, what I want to do additionally is I'm going to go up here and edit, delete all by type. I'm going to delete history and then I'm going to go up to modify and freeze transformations. Um, so now we have yeah, cleared all that history. There shouldn't be anything um, bad with it. And then additionally one more thing that you want to do is make sure that your back uh, board here and then the, the front lettering are two different materials. Um, so you can just assign one material uh, down here. I'm going to yeah, already have one assigned there. And then you could additionally assign another one here uh, as well. So um, these are existing materials that were already in here that I'm using, but you can always use the, uh, the hyper shade if you need to make a new material. Um, but the main thing is uh, basically just having two different material IDs on the two sign pieces. Uh, so now that we have that, I can uh, click these two items here and I'm going to file export selection. Um, and basically, yeah, bring it into Unreal Engine. So I'm going to jump over to Unreal Engine. So over here, uh, now that we have our signage and everything uh, set up, I want to import and actually find that, uh, that test file basically that I've made. So test scene. Um, and then I'm going to yeah, hit import basically and make sure that everything is combined. Cool. And so now we have our neon sign. Um, so I'm going to drag it out and we should see this here. And yeah, let's see how it looks. So I'm going to rotate it and throw it up here, uh, 90 degrees. Make sure that it's yeah correct uh, to the orientation. Um, and then I can scale this up as much as I want. So basically adjusting that or so and um, yeah, let's say that that's looking not half bad. Uh, maybe I'll bring it down a little bit and there we go. So now we just have two basic materials on it. Um, it came in normally with just the, uh, the actual uh, two different material IDs that we kind of placed inside of Maya. Um, so I could make new materials or I could just use these actually uh, for that. Uh, now what I am going to do for my, uh, my backboard here is I actually have a glass already kind of made for my windows. Um, and I should be able to just drag that over and see how that looks. Uh, it seems to be working pretty well. So yeah, now we have uh, our glass on the background. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I do have an emissive, but I want to go ahead and actually just set up the, the old one as an emissive or the, uh, the one that we brought in. Um, so now in our, uh, shader here, I'm going to just drag out this parameter. Um, and of course this is that color, uh, just for the, the signage itself. Um, but I want to, yeah, disable that. And basically I'm going to multiply. Um, and plug this into the emissive and then I want to make another parameter here So I just clicked a, a one value and then I'm going to right click it and convert it to parameter um, And I want to name this one my uh, emissive uh, Intensity So this will be how we can actually control the intensity of our emissive um, Like our light basically uh, and then of course this one's already set up as a parameter uh, so this is how we can control our color. Um, and then by default, yeah, let's say that I'm just going to do this to a five. Um, that way we can see, yeah, how it's looking. 
And now once that compiles, just saving and all, uh, we can start to see that we are getting some light from it. Uh, now the couple of things that will be able to be controlled as well in the actual scene uh, will be like the bloom and all. But if I go over here and actually start to change my emissive intensity, you can see that we are now getting our, uh, yeah, our um, neon light. And so there we go. We have a simple, cool white, uh, but I can change it to whatever I want. You know, if, if we got the, the green background, sometimes red kind of is a, a nice pop, complimentary colors, um, or we could go with a more green or yellow. I personally think like, you know, uh, at least the sign that I was using, I was doing more of a yellowish uh, kind of warm orange. Uh, that way it yeah, contrasts nicely with the, the softer green uh, back there. But all these colors work great. Um, I think it's, it's really awesome just being able to real time control this. And yeah, we can really, uh, let's say we go with a, a color like this. Um, I'll actually go, I'll, I'll go with the, no, I want to, I want to go with the, the color that actually it goes along with our original look at least. Um, so there we go. And let's set this to 10. Uh, now you might be not necessarily getting the same results that I'm getting. Uh, one thing that can definitely contribute to that as well is over in your post process material. So, or your post process volume. Um, if you go down to bloom or I can type it in here, and find my bloom volume. So the, uh, yeah, turning on bloom and then controlling the intensity, you can see that like if I have it off, it's pretty flat, but having an, a little bit of bloom can really help bump that, uh, that impact that we kind of get from uh, when we have, uh, when we're looking at neon signs, uh, because they're so intense in a very specific spot, uh, bloom can really help uh, just, yeah, overall make that. Um, now it is smaller of a, a sign, you know, of course we have, if I were to throw a sphere in here and actually apply, uh, that material that we've made, um, we're getting some pretty solid, like light response, uh, specifically from that emissive, uh, material, but it's, you know, our, our neon signs not as strong. Um, so one thing I might suggest as well is instead of like bumping up the emissive intensity like crazy, uh, actually in here where, you know, if we go up like this, um, like it's getting super shiny and really uh, starting to yeah, mess around with the bloom that's going on there. Um, but it's not necessarily like lighting up more of the area as much. Uh, and that's just because the the lighting is a lot more intense in one specific area. Uh, so what I might suggest instead of trying to yeah, push it in the emissive, like uh, kind of what we were seeing with that ball, is actually placing um, maybe just like an aid light uh, to it as well. Um, so this is a pretty small light that I just uh, placed in here. And it's not doing a ton, um, but I think what uh, is nice about it is, yeah, I can pretty much line it up right here. And it's just getting like a little bit more glow, you know, from there if we're uh, pushing that around. Uh, of course, I can really play with the the color and everything if I wanted to like make it feel more. Uh, let's see if the yeah the detail lighting that way it yeah it feels a little bit warmer, uh, more direct with the the actual sign that we've made. Um, and it's not a ton, but it it adds a little bit more of that. Uh, this emissive uh, light basically impacting the environment around it. Um, so I think it's yeah nice in that way. And then additionally, like one thing that I, I kind of liked that I had going on um, was I put a couple of spotlights up here uh, just for you know, the dramatic effect, basically. Um, they're not needed, but I think having some cooler tones, especially with the, the colors that we kind of went for, um, bring in these these blues just yeah filling it in with a, a contrasting like cool and warm color uh, is really nice and it's getting some nice contrast uh, and just shadow shapes overall with this um, so with that yeah basically we've made our unreal engine 5 emissive or neon sign and um, basically i think the only other thing that was in here 
that I actually had was the uh, the logo as well and that logo all I did was I actually found logo online and actually just yeah ran it through and got a, um, a mask with it as well so if I go over to my materials real quick uh, you'll see that yeah you basically have this material here um, let me switch it to a different shape oh, it's down here so yeah there's our Unreal Engine logo there. Um, and I just basically changed this from uh, a blend mode, uh, opaque or whatever. I switched it to masked. Um, and then I brought that Unreal Engine logo um, and then plugged it in to the opacity mask. Uh, that way I have the, yeah, the opac opacity basically masking out uh, with that shape. Um, so that's how I was able to get that, yeah, that final Unreal Engine logo in here as well. Um, just for the the full result but yeah besides that um, like I said we pretty much have our neon light here um, and yeah I think it's a really cool way to use the new lumen system to uh, light an environment of course we've seen it a lot just thrown on random uh, like balls or uh, models or so uh, and playing around with the scene but this is more uh, along the lines of something in the real world that we could use uh, the the lumen and the emissive lighting for uh, and I think it could really uh, add a lot to a scene if we did it this way um, but yeah besides that uh, that is all for this video um, and I will see you next time